well. Tuggle with the tackle. That brings up second and nine at the 43. Could do one where I push into the CD. I don't okay. know if that's I sort of the price you have to hit. Huh? It's yeah, not a good price point. It's really important. Yeah. Um, actually, when I was in Greece two years ago, I was out in, on Santorini, and in the store shot. there, they had a the box. Static? So, yeah. I was like, no, oh, it was like $300. Oh, my God. I'm yeah. going to static. So that way, I'll so do it on two cuts. Okay. Right. okay. That's not a good it was so we actually, when we were training developers, write software for this okay. thing. We actually pulled out all the Atari 2600 and graphics and all this okay. other stuff, but to make really good games, it's like, mm -hmm. let's go back where you didn't have any graphics at all. What made a game really great? So we would pull out Space match. Invaders, <laughs> Bowl. <Okay. laughs> Space Invaders was like this incredible development. Oh, yeah. Big leap Huge forward, leap. yeah. Because there was like the, the shrink your head. Yeah, the, it's the, always sort of the cliche to how you know if you blink you're out of it. I the first one I went to was maybe like almost 12 years ago, and uh, they announced this. So was it that show or was it? Yeah, I believe it was that, that show oh, it's Dan. Uh, that they actually had to clip some of his Brian stuff out the on the rebroadcast re of the West Coast. Coast. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. And so, like, that was the beginning. I'd never even heard of I him, and that night was the beginning of his downfall. <laughs> <laughs> You're plugged yeah, in, man. No, this is. You need the light here? No. This is Eisner. He's got some code in his office right now, squealing with glaze up. <laughs> okay, never mind. I'm sorry. Uh, what's up? About Friday, was, did you and Kevin have a nice talk? Okay. Between you two. No. It's a really funny thing. Well, I saw an, uh, a new uh, yeah. magazine yeah. article where they were yeah, talking to HR good. people about what kind of job that they I were trying to get her into. Oh, man, it was hilarious. This one guy's like, oh, I could turn her resume around to be, you know, people-focused, <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> service-related, <laughs> catering to the needs of the rich. Catering to the needs of the needy. She could yeah. be a new co-host with Good under pressure. Oh, <laughs> Thank God. Um, well, it's it's things that mental health. All right. Peter. It's all. It is. You get this. It's all our territory. <laughs> now we're going home. Oh, he said, you know, you hear my voice I've been teaching for 20 years, engaged. and that's the first time somebody's ever come in and, and you know, had, had screwing their head off as an excuse. So I got to let that go. <laughs> <laughs> give, give that voice for Okay, just keep your full name. Spell it for me. It's uh, Joe Fielder, J-O-E-F-I-E-L-D-E-R. And what do we describe you as I'm here? I'm the, uh, the executive editor of uh, videogames.com, which is all lowercase unless it starts a sentence. Okay. Um... Well, what's the importance of the of the new Sega machine? One of the, I think one of the most important things about the Dreamcast is that we're getting the next generation of graphics of, of. Let me start. Sorry. Go ahead. You start. Um, what's important? I think what's important about the Dreamcast is that it's it's a significant step forward uh, for video games, for console games. Uh, the graphics are comparable to an arcade system. They're comparable to uh, a fairly high-end PC, and 
it delivers at a, you know, at a pretty reasonable cost. What would you compare it to for a leap in the game industry? I would compare the I'd compare the leap to from say the Atari 2600 to uh, the Super Nintendo, and it's a, a fairly big leap. Uh, you're able to get graphics comparable to say Soul Calibur for the Dreamcast. It's a Namco arcade game. Uh, the arcade game would cost you about seven eight thousand dollars, and and it only does the the fighting game Soul Calibur. Uh, Soul Calibur on the Dreamcast actually looks better, and it's got extra features, uh, and that's a that's a you know pretty significant value. But now, for instance, I'm told this stuff is it's creating animation in real time. Mm -hmm. It has a you know stored banks of of figures and gestures, and then it makes up what they do in real time. Mm -hmm. That's the, big. The animations are, are pretty incredible. Uh, NFL 2K, for example, one of our reviewers said that the experience of, of playing the game was was almost like being the, down there on the field and, and playing with real players. How much further do they have to go? What's the holy grail in, in video games? It's uh, it's hard to imagine how much better graphics can look. Uh, I think the I think the end result would be uh, graphics like Toy Story or, or another animated movie like that. Uh, some of the things we've seen on the Dreamcast are approaching that. Shenmue, for example, is, uh, is a game that's coming up in the, the next year where uh, you know, you're moving around in a real world talking to different characters and the facial animations look like, look like real people, albeit kind of a you know, computer chrome sort of look to them. They look like real people. So you're approaching having a $200 child's toy mm -hmm. generating the kind of stuff that it used to take a whole corporation and a a team of animators to do. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, they've got a pretty, pretty big teams developing these games. So it's, uh, and and development cycles. The more advanced the game, the more time that it's taking to develop games like this. You used to see games being put out in a, a year. Now it's looking at two years, possibly three years, as we've moved over from 2D sort of graphics like Mortal Kombat or what have you to 3D real worlds. I'm tempted to say, as an outside observer, this is just another passing fling. They all come and they all go. Uh, they all do, but uh, I think what we're, we're getting with this new, I think what we're getting with this new generation of systems is a point where casual consumers will stop and be kind of awed, where they'll be pulled in. People who haven't been into video games for whatever reason will be impressed enough while they'll be like, you know, let me let me try let me try it out. Let me play it. You think people will be stunned at how real this is? Yeah, I think we are approaching that that sort of Toy Story like graphics. If not that, then then very close enough to uh, give people pause. Where could it possibly go from here? I think the next step is uh, is to make things look like computer generated movies. Uh, to get to that point where. You know, playing a game looks like a, a computer-generated movie. There are sequences within games called FMV sequences or, or CG sequences, where you'll you'll see little segments uh, that are that are comparable to Toy Story. Uh, you know, Tekken. Uh, the Tekken series is well known for its intros, which look even better than than Toy Story. Um, I think that's the, the the final point we can get to, where where you're you're playing a game and the, the backgrounds are all you know. All like a like a, a film where you've got a full cast around you, uh, instead of say like a fighting game where you're 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 two people uh, fighting on a, a flat 2D horizon. In terms of that football game, you can just turn it on and let it play a game. It's like it's a game on television. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nobody's done that before. Uh, there have been games where you can you know set up to play by itself, but uh, you might not want to uh, sit down and. and Watch it. Whereas in NFL 2K, the, the animations and uh, the animations are so amazing. Watching the players get up and walk around and cough and everything, it's uh, it, it's it's amazing. What's the ultimate for a game player? What does a what does a game player want? I think the game player is looking for an experience, whether that's a one-on-one -on -one experience, like a story, like a role-playing game, where you're you're put into a quest and you you're taken into a storyline and you're you're the main character and you you bring that story to fruition or a good challenge and that can be 
you know, that can be, you know, playing against uh, computer opponents or playing against a, a live opponent if you're playing for something, someone, against someone online, uh, whether that's in a, a strategy game or a, a first-person shooter. But what you see is as important, if not more important, than what you do? Well, gameplay is always the root, I think. But uh, graphics are, are just getting more and more impressive as time goes on. In, in the past, uh, I think graphics were kind of iconic in the early days of, say, Space Invaders or Tempest, things like that. The uh, side art was always really fantastic, but you would then look at the game and the, and the graphics were very basic and your imagination kind of had to fill in those gaps. And we're getting to the point where uh, a lot of the graphics that you're seeing are, they look like real people. And they look like you know they look like real characters instead of uh, you know little squiggly lines on a screen. Yeah, but just the you said on the one hand they're taking more time to develop mm -hmm. the games, but on the other the technology is moving so fast that you said also that George Lucas mm -hmm. says what he used to just do his latest movies already you know available almost at home. Mm -hmm. How do you reconcile those two things? Well, that's a so, answer that, answer yeah. that. Yeah. look at me when you answer. That. Yeah. The technology is moving very quickly, but on, on the console side, on the video, con the home video game side, you have certain plateaus. When a new system comes out, developers have a few years. The life cycle of a system is probably about four to five years. Uh, you've got that time as a developer to learn the system and learn its capabilities. On the PC, it's a little bit harder, I think, for developers to develop games because the standard's always changing. Every six months, there's a new card or there's something new to, to develop for. But uh, you really get to learn how to, to get the most out of a, a system when you, when you have no place to grow. Yeah. Okay, no, that's good. Yeah. Maybe the online side for the Dreamcast? You know, what? Yeah, well, yeah. Because that's a whole new avenue they're exploring. Yeah, I think, I think a lot of people are talking about, uh, pretty early, about how this is going to be a, a big new thing for, for video games when on the, on the PC side, uh, it's taken a long time to figure out a lot of issues of playing games over uh, online. Uh, things like lag, uh, where you're, you're playing against someone else and say, say, say you're doing a fighting game, uh, you hit, hit the punch button and you have to wait for the punch to arrive or someone else punches you in that time because they, they have a faster connection. Um, you know, it's, there's certain things that, um, there's certain things like that that are going to have to be <coughs> dealt with. And I don't know, uh, there's certain hurdles that, uh, that Sega and the people that developed for the system are going to have to get to. I don't know that you're going to be able to see a lot of really fast running games from the get-go on the Dreamcast. In the beginning, they're starting off kind of conservatively, and I think they'll, they'll build from there. It's sort of more promise than there is reality. Yeah, yeah. The, it's kind of brought out as a, as a bright new shining hope, whereas I think it's going to be uh, I think it's going to be a few years before uh, it really gets moving, if okay. at all. Just, yeah. yeah. Just thought of one other thing. They they tell us upstairs they've sold or have people have come in and deposited mm -hmm. more money on three hundred thousand units. Mm -hmm. How impressive is that? That's that's fairly comparable to uh, the the numbers of the PlayStation, Nintendo sixty four. Uh, that's uh, and that's that's fairly impressive because Sega has had kind of a, a tough record. The last system they came out with, the Saturn, people felt like it really wasn't supported too well by either uh, Sega or uh, third-party companies, and people felt a little bit burnt. You know, a lot of the people that are buying console games, they can only buy one system every few years, and if they don't get like all the great games on that system, then they're going to kind of feel gypped. And uh, I know a lot of people felt that about uh, about the Saturn. And uh, from the get-go, when the Dreamcast was first announced, they said, no, I'm not going to get it because I was gypped by Sega. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a lot of those people are, are turning around now that they've seen the system and, and seen that it's really getting a lot of support. OK. Great. I was just like, the, uh, the new game is really a lot of eye can candy, and people are going to be most impressed with the way it looked. But isn't it the artificial intelligence part where the game learns how to play against you and beat you, is that, I, I was wondering if that's, a, is that new or exciting or is that different? Uh, the is that as important as the look of it? Yeah, the gameplay is, is the main core of it, and that's that's always been the, the main core, and, and the graphics have been being, being built up over the years. Uh, in, intelligence of the, the computer opponents has been something that we've been seeing uh, more and more of a challenge, and that's you know some of the some of the games that are coming out for the launch for the Dreamcast. They're not only really great to look at; they're really uh, 
uh, really fun to play. I mean, there's there's and a few smart. standout titles. They, they play back. Uh, they play pretty pretty aggressively. I don't know that that's I don't know that they play more aggressively than a game on a PlayStation or a Nintendo 64. But uh, but the level right now the standard is pretty high. Okay. Great. Good. Cool. I play games all day. I'm just like, what do you publish monthly? Oh, uh, we publish daily. Actually, uh, sometimes uh, several times a day. It's all on the web. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, yeah. So we are connected. No, there's no paper publication. No, not for us. We are connected with uh, paper publication, Electronic Gaming Monthly, and uh, the official PlayStation Magazine. Mm -hmm. and just as uh, GameSpot's connected with uh, Computer Gaming World, but uh, it's all the same company. We both, you know, both know our market better than the other do. Um, well, I mean, does your stuff ever get printed, or somebody else is is reviewing the same games and doing the same stuff for for print? Yeah, actually, that's uh, that's the case. It makes them a little silly, but we're both uh, reviewing for for different audiences. Uh, on the there's some overlap on news and uh, previews and things like that, mm -hmm. where uh, something I might write might show up over in print, or something that those guys write may show up over here. Mm -hmm. But it goes both ways. And how how long has this been publishing online? Yeah. We've been uh, one. We've been I know. For oh, Bob, shut up. <laughs> one, don't don't answer this. Okay. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, now you fourteen. Got the editor mad at you. <laughs> okay.